What's up guys? Today I'm going to be going over, you know, the book Rework, which is a really good book. I enjoyed it. It's pretty short and sweet. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be giving you guys a few of my insights, about six or seven. And yeah, let's just chop into it. Why fail? If you've read a fair amount of business books, you'll find the common motif or the common theme that you have to fail numerous amounts of times before you succeed. You have to try 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 and try again and eventually you might be lucky a universe will reward you with success in business now why should you fail just because other people go through this boring and tedious process of going through several different iterations and different businesses before they succeed doesn't mean you have to why should you go in with that mindset because they didn't understand what marketing was or value creation or you know how to create iteration cycles or how to create systems within business doesn't mean that you have to fall for the same shit. You can do your own thing and you can succeed the first time. So going with the right mindset, why fail? It's kind of like going into a relationship with anticipation of you know breaking up or getting into a marriage and getting your divorce papers ready. It doesn't make sense, does it? So why should you go to business with the intention of failing? Don't do it. Go with intention success and you will do really good. No more workaholics. A lot of people believe that working longer hours and harder hours means that you're working better. This is not true at all. What we want is efficient workers. We don't want people that are in the office or in your you know, studio for hours non end leaving way past the time that everyone else leaves, making everyone else feel bad. Just because they're working longer doesn't mean they're working better. What you want is efficient work. You want to reward the people that finish their work early and do it right. Not the people that stay behind making up excuses to be there. Efficient work is king. We don't want workaholics. That's why it's generally better to have small teams or small groups of people whenever you're doing a startup, whenever you're starting something. It's kind of like in the book, The Personal MBA. They say that it's better to have a group of maybe, you know, when you stand up, just 10 or less people that work like surgeons, surgical, than a huge team of maybe 100 people when no one really knows what they're doing or what to, whereabouts to go, etc. You want people that are skilled in what they do and do their work efficiently. You don't want a large amount of people making up excuses to be there. So fuck the workaholics. Polarize. You need to get strong opinions of your business, right? You can't be generic. It's kind of like in a purple cow. If you try please everybody, you're gonna please nobody. This world is now become very dynamic, very huge. People can interact with each other from all across the world. And there's no way you're gonna be able to please everybody. There's too many different viewpoints, opinions. So you need to polarize, you need to stand for something. You need to stand for something, have a backbone, and go along with it. You see, a lot of businesses try to play it safe. They try to be generic and please everybody. But what happens is you get, you know, people can't see you. You you blend in with all the other mediocre companies. You need to polarize and stick with your guns. Target the select few people that are into your thing and forget about the rest. If 9 out of 10 of the people who come to your restaurant they really like one recipe and one person doesn't like it, are you going to change the recipe? Customers are not always right. Keep the right ones. Start at the epicenter. You need to start at what's fundamental from the get-go. Let's say you have a hot dog stand. What's the first thing that you have to do? It's not the ketchup. It's not the uniform. It's not the logo of your hot dog stand. It's the damn hot dogs. You need to get the hot dogs first. And then you worry about other things. Same thing with business. You need to get what makes your business function first and then you worry about other things. You always make decisions and change decisions in the future, but the primary decisions are what's important in the moment and you need to always worry about that. The foundation, what's really important, what makes things run. That is what you need to be working on and that is what you will be working on. Focus on what won't change. This one goes along with the last one. There's a set amount of things in the business world that won't change. For example, great customer service and company policies are things that won't change, that people will always enjoy. For example, people enjoyed free shipping 20 years ago. 
and people are going to enjoy free shipping 20 years from now is something that won't change don't always be going out for the latest and trendiest fashion statements or whatever is new in business do what's fundamental a good example of this that was in the book the personal MBA is Jeff Bezos of Amazon decided that they wouldn't put in the same amount of money into the marketing campaign as they used to because marketing has changed over time people are not as interested in TV ads they put the money back into the services and the products offering you know free shipping for a lot of the products on Amazon and because of this the company's profits have skyrocketed because people were really into this idea people really enjoyed this so you need to focus on what won't change pleasing customers making them happy is something that transcends time competition doesn't matter well a lot of people say competition doesn't matter for you competition shouldn't matter because when competition does matter what happens is you're always gonna be one step behind you're always gonna be stressed out and anxious trying to figure out what your competitor is doing instead of doing that you should be trying to innovate yourself trying to differentiate yourself from your competitor trying to put all that effort into your product into your services making you different to your competitor if you're always following what your competitors are going to be doing you're going to be one step behind like you can't app out apple apple you can't out microsoft microsoft so stop looking at what they're doing and put yourself in a league of your own focusing on your own thing so competition only ultimately doesn't matter because you shouldn't even be in the same league as your competition embrace the startup a lot of people are in a rush to grow their companies they're in a rush to expand but you should really be enjoying when you're small when you're just starting out because you have room to maneuver you have room to change to experiment to see what you really like at the beginning when no one knows you that's when you can really test yourself out and change things without repercussions as your company or your business get bigger gets bigger and bigger it's a lot harder to change you have to stay consistent there'll be people watching you now and if you disappoint people the scale is going to be a lot larger than when you were smaller. A little change in your product or your service can end up disappointing thousands of people, becoming very troublesome for you. Whereas when you're smaller, when you're starting out, you might just disappoint two or three people. So really enjoy the process and enjoy the beginning of everything. So those are just some of the insights from the book. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to grab the book. It's great. And yeah, peace.